This is a 1966 Yamaha YL1, better known as a Yamaha Twin Jet. And this bike is cool for a lot of reasons. It's a two stroke and it's a 100cc twin, which makes the pistons itty bitty tiny little things. Now I'm told these bikes sound like a pair of angry chainsaws, but this one isn't running. So today we're gonna get it running so we can hear it for ourselves. I don't know if this bike is gonna be able to run on, you know, pure rust. I assume that's what's getting dumped into the tank right now. Right, we're gonna find out. Now, believe it or not, we dug this bike out of a junkyard in New Jersey. And I gotta say, it's actually, other than the rust, it's in really good shape, or it's at least complete. We have the headlight and the gauges, the horn, the fenders, and it's not all dented up or beat up. It's just rusty and ugly. So the good thing we have going for us is the engine's free. Oh. And it actually seems like we have a little bit of compression. But the carburetors are locked up. They're seized up. None of that works. Looks like we're missing a spark plug cap here. Uh, I don't even know if I can get this oil cap off. That's going to be on there pretty tight. So the first couple steps I'm going to do is I'm going to pull the spark plugs and I'm going to get some oil down into the holes. And I'm going to work at the carburetors to get them freed up. I'm going to get them off the bike, cleaned up. I have no idea what's in this tank though. I'm hoping it's not a bunch of rust or hornets or squirrels. Where's my light? Let's see. <gasps> what? No. Is it even more rust than you Ooh, could ever imagine? Look at this. Look how clean that is. Man, that is exciting. The tank actually looks better on the inside than it does the outside. No way. Okay, so we're gonna pull the plugs, we're gonna get some oil in there, and then we're gonna start the carburetors. This stuff here. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna pull the drain plug for the bottom end or for the transmission, and I'm gonna see if any oil comes out of it. I don't know. Chances are it's not, but let's see what we have. Ooh, seemed a little loose. Dan, you want to grab that little yellow drain pan right there? I'm going to put Dan to work. Take a stupid drain pan, Craig. Let's see what comes out of here. What the heck is that holding? The oh, what? There's actually oil in there. Is that surprising? Yeah. Wow. There's actually oil in there. It smells horrible. So take a whiff of that. Mm. Wow. I can't believe there's oil in there. So this is actually off to a really good start. The engine's free, the motor is free, that's not locked up. The inside of the tank is actually really clean and there was oil in the transmission. That's all good. If the inside of the tank is clean, that probably means there's like the worst clog ever in the fuel line after the tank. That's Man, probably what it means. There's gotta be something. Oh, you did get that off. Yeah. You liar, you made it sound like it was gonna be a big deal. I, Here it goes. <laughs> I was a little surprised. This is the oil pump. Now in 1963, Yamaha introduced the automatic oiling system or the Yamaha auto lube system. And what this did is this eliminated the need for mixing the gas and the oil. So gas goes in the tank, oil goes in the oil tank, runs down into the oil pump, and then it's fed back up through these lines right into the intake track after the carburetor. So this is three years into this system. Yamaha actually perfected this system and these automatic oiling systems ran flawlessly. Now a lot of guys did pull them off, but there was no need to. So we got a lot of stuff going in our favor right now. I think the next step is we take these carburetors off and get them soaking and cleaning a while. And then we're gonna have to attack the spark issue. That air boot is just cracked and broken. See that in there? That's not good, but I don't think that's gonna keep us from getting this thing started. Okay. There it is. Now we got one. Now we gotta work at the other one. There we go. Those fuel lines are just gonna break like that. And I think this one here will do the same, just like that. So the slides are definitely stuck. I just PB blast them, we'll be fine. Just PB blast them. You're learning, Dan. When are we getting that giant ultrasonic cleaner? Turn around. Wait, for real? Oh, is that it? That's it. Wow. This looks like it belongs in a kitchen. Everything is so brittle. We gotta be careful here. There we go. 
get some penetrating oil in there so we can get these things freed up. Okay, so while those are cooking, let's give ourselves a little more room. Let's pop the seat off. Let's maybe pop the tank off. We'll see what we got going on underneath this stuff. We'll just kind of take it one step at a time. Okay, so here we have, we have some electronics. We have our key switch. We have our fuse. Air filter is going to be in there. Some wires. Wait a minute. This doesn't have electric start, does it? Okay, so I don't know. I don't know if we have some of these actually, I think it was later though. It was an L, you know, it was a YL1E and that stood for electric start. They had a six volt version. I believe you put a six volt battery in here and it would power your lights and everything and then i think the 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 yl1e went to a 12 volt uh and that actually gave you electric start so you're saying we might have a yl1e i wouldn't have thought so but all sorts of crazy stuff going on here today we'll figure it out so i'm gonna say probably points are in under here maybe let's see if i can pop this cover off all right, and there we have our points. We have two capacitors and we have two sets of points this is interesting these old bikes are really something yeah, so at this point, what we're trying to do is the carburetor, the slide here inside the carburetor, that shiny part, is stuck with inside the, the bore of the carburetor here. And generally that's because of the dissimilar metals, steel slide, aluminum carburetor. So we need to get some penetrating oil in there, see if we can get these to come loose. Man, those things are really in there. Those things are really in there. How are you feeling about this, Craig? I'm still feeling pretty optimistic. Just got to get the carbs unstuck. Just got to get the carbs apart. And then we'll fire it up. I want to hear these angry chainsaws. Okay, so I got the slide to start moving. I think the needle is stuck in, so I'm going to pull the float bowl here, see what we got. Look at that. Mm. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's pretty consistent with how the bike, the rest of the bike looks. Yeah, that seems about right. This slide is still stuck. Prying slides out of carburetors is not really ideal add a little heat. So the idea here is adding heat to the carburetor body is going to expand the aluminum body quicker than it's going to expand the steel of the slide and that'll let us pull the slide out. Wow that's hot. Ah, it's moving though. Get your oven mitt. Ah, it's hot. Okay we're getting closer. Maybe you want to get your gloves. Eh. Got some mechanics gloves. Don't need gloves where we're going. To the hospital? Wow that's hot. Yeah, look at that man so it's all that stuff that's what was that's what was giving us a hard time boy that thing really did give us a hard time look at that temp Ooh. what does that do increases the temperature i'm guessing that's in celsius what does 50 degrees celsius equal it's halfway to boiling we need hot water a little dawn Thing sounds like it's gonna take off. Okay, we're gonna add a little more water. Let that do its thing for a while. All right, let's see if we can get this other one off. That would be neat. All right, Craig, you oh. notice the smoke coming off of there. That means it's hot. Yeah. There, just a little heat on that one, and that did the trick. Now let's get this apart, and we're gonna get this in the cleaner as well. Come on, Craig, I'm dying to know if this one looks- Oh, I caught it. <laughs> That's not how you open carbs, Craig. They're not coconuts. They're not eggs. There we go. It's so funny, man. We got tons of dirt in there, and then our pilot jet in there. It looks like it's new. I wonder if there's like mud daubers living in here. Right. Well, we're just gonna throw this whole shoot and match in there for a while. Okay, we're gonna let that cook for a while now we gotta see if we can get spark if i know anything if we can have compression check spark and fuel we can make this thing run let's see what do we have in here they adjust the points for those capacitors or condensed condensers and then the points and then this is how you adjust the point gap from here down to here is the point and you have a little jam nut so you can move the points up and down so you can get the right uh, point gap. We're gonna take a little emery cloth and we are going to open up these points and clean them off. 
give it just a slow kick, uh, move the kick starter through it cycle there for me. I just want to get this one point to close. Oh, slow, a little bit. Yep. Stop. Looks like all my wires are going into the headlight. Like usual. So no e-start? No, no e-start. No e-start on this one, Dan. We are kicking. Is it really only held in with one screw? It's a really good screw. Apparently. Okay. There's stuff in there. Off. On. I don't know. I'm not sure how this switch is supposed to work exactly. But I do know if we spray a little WD-40 in there a while. Better. Oh, we got light. What? Oh. Ah. <laughs> That's a cute little horn. Now, let's see if we have any sort of spark here. Yeah. Mm. Huge relief. Look at this, Dan. That's a spark. That's what that is. Let's see if we can get some spark out of this other one. Yeah. yeah. So we have spark there. All right. Give that Kickstarter up. Wind that thing up. That's some, that's some spark over there. I see it. Yeah. Sparking on both ends. We got the spark. We got the compression. I guess we'll see if the carbs can pull through after this. Yeah, let's see. We let these things cook for 20 minutes at 70 degrees Celsius. Dude, it's not too bad for 20 minutes worth of doing. I think better than it was. I mean, they still need a lot of work, but let's give them another bath. I need more of a uh, degreaser something i'm not sure what but something what's this is this degreaser cleans everything washable spray on spray off all purpose cleaner chugga 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 oh yeah now we're cooking with ultrasonic rays okay so those are doing that spark plugs i wonder if these plugs will spark so we have one spark plug cap we don't have two we're gonna have to find another spark plug all right, let's put that there. Tell me if you see spark out of that plug. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Nice, okay. Okay, so that means this is all working, so I'll have to button that up. We gotta clean the carburetors, and then this is gonna run. Yeah, <laughs> I'm excited. We don't have tires. Yeah, sure you do. I need to get tires. <laughs> yes. These are tires. Most of tires. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, you're good. <laughs> you're good. Ship shape. Okay. <gasps> I found the toolkit. How neat is that? That's, Where was it? That's cool. It's here underneath the oil oil tank cover. Oh my gosh. Well, that's what we were missing this whole time. The toolkit. We could have really been fixing this bike. I don't know what we were waiting on. What do they normally put in these toolkits? I don't know. Get some tools. And we got some oil. We do need to prime. Do you want to prime the oil lines? So when we kick it, watch this little gear. Yeah, see that moving? Yeah. And then as you twist the throttle, there's a split up in here. Oh, throttle still doesn't want to move. That but throttle's that crusty. Moves. Yeah, that was sprinkling stuff while you were was turning that, it. Was it? Well, yeah. I guess we got to get that taken apart too. This stuff here is going to have to come apart. We're going to have to get these cables lubed up. It's amazing what happens once you get spark to an engine like this. It kind of rejuvenates you and you want to keep going. Puts a little spark in my step. Found the mud daubers. Oh, good. They were living inside the throttle tube. See, living their best life. Here, Dan, look at the, look at the mud daubers. Where? And in here, that's probably the in-laws quarter. Okay, so we have an internal throttle. We're gonna evict them. Looks like this is gonna lift out. Okay, there we go. Now is this gonna pull out of there? There we go, we got it dripping out the bottom. Yep, so we have, it's going into the uh, splitter box. So if I'm not mistaken, this throttle cable comes down into a splitter box and it's gonna split it into three. Yeah, three. So we have one cable for the right, 
the left carb, one cable for the right carb, and then one cable to operate this oil pump. So we go from one cable down here to this box, this junction box, that splits it to three. Okay, well, now we got that lubed up. Stick this back in here. There's that. Yeah, now our slides are working. Now this piece here, if you look, you can see right here starts a little bit of a curly cue inside that throttle housing. So that rides inside this, this groove right here. As you move the throttle, that moves this in and out. It pulls this out, pulling the throttle cable. I'll show you here in a second. The cleaner you can get this, the better the throttle's gonna work. Greg, can I open this tool pouch? Yeah, let's see what's in there. powder. So let's put 1966 into perspective here in the motorcycle world. Yamaha brought their first, well, I don't even know if they brought it over, but Yamaha's first bike was in like 1957 and this bike's a 66. So this isn't too far into the run of motorcycling in the United States. In 1960, there was less than 600,000 motorcycles registered in the United States. And by 1966, when this bike came out, that number doubled to over uh, 1.3 million. Other cool things in 1966, it's actually the first year Kawasaki brought a bike to the United States. And Bell Helmet released the first full face helmet in 1966 as well. Some motorcycle trivia for you as we assemble carburetors. Carburetor, carburetor assembly. Never do that again, cut Dan. That, cut that out, Amanda. <laughs> Never do that again. Save it for my Dan. personal channel. Car carburetor tunes. It's carburetor tunes. The washer's proven to be a little tricky. Okay, so here are our next steps. I'm gonna get the slides put back on the throttle cables. I'm gonna get the carburetors back on the bike. Then I'm gonna get the oil tank drained out. I'm gonna get that filled with fresh oil and we're gonna prime our oil pump. After we prime our oil pump, it's put oil back into the transmission. Give this thing four kicks and it's gonna fire right up. Four? Four. I'm calling it early on this one. We got a lot of good stuff going for us. We had a clean tank. We had a free motor. We have decent spark. Everything's complete. Yeah. I'm giving it four. I don't know. I'm feeling good. So here we are. We're going to throw these back on. We're going to get this drained. We're going to get the fuel pump or the oil pump primed. Fire it up. Fire it up. Fire it up. Oh. What? What happened? What'd you do? The throttle cable just broke off. Oh, no. That's not good. That's not good. I just touched it and it just fell off. From where? Inside here. Look, there was like nothing holding it on. It's like one strand. Okay. Guess we just have to figure out how to make a throttle cable. Right, Dan? Yep. Okay. Oh, darn it, that really stinks. That, that really threw a wrench in my plans for today. That stinks so hard, man. <laughs> Don't let it get you. That thing doesn't even, that's just rusted in place there. So the throttle cable is just gonna pull apart. What else is gonna pull apart? Right. You definitely don't have brakes on this bike. I think I have rears, but I don't have fronts for sure. Really? Because, yeah, look, this cable here broke. There's supposed to be an arm coming from here, I believe, then that cable pulls that arm, da da da, stop. But their cable's broke and the arm's missing, so. But look at this, look, watch. Rear brakes work. Okay, so we need to figure this out. I need this throttle cable right here. Okay, so there we have the outer. Ah, oh, come on, don't break stuff. That is nasty. What is that? I don't know. 
Looks like a hive. Yeah, it's like a rat's. It's That's a rat's nest there. Hey, air cleaner could be full of rat's nest too. All right, one problem at a time though. Let's get this throttle cable figured out because if we don't figure that out, rat's nests don't matter. This stuff is so brittle. All right, let's see what we can do. All we can really do is try. You got this. Yeah, I got this. Now I have to see if I can find ends. And remember to put the outer over the inner before putting the ends on. That'll ruin your day. Beautiful. Right? Yeah. <laughs> Got a throttle we're, cable. I think we're good to go. Just a minor setback. Oh, what if I do this? Wait, how's that come out? How's that come out of there? So I start talking to myself. This is the part I was a little concerned about with the thicker cable. Because it's slotted, I need to get the cable into this slot. I might have to make that slot a hair bigger. Okay, so here's the problem. This cable's a little thicker than the groove it's meant to go in right here. Yep. And then it sits in. Yep. So I need to relieve this. Open that up. Open that up a hair. And it's only a quarter millimeter. Is, does that piece move or can, like it shouldn't be seated in there too tight, right? Well, it doesn't need to really move, no. Well, it, it moves, but it, is it, the, it moves is the, the Is the cable hole. gonna slide along it? Yeah, the cable doesn't have to slide along it. Oh. The cable will slide on the inside of it. Yeah, this is just to hold it. This is like fine carpentry work, minus the wood and the fine. But other than that, it's exactly like precision woodworking. A little test. A little sand, a little file. Sweet. We're gonna wrap that up a little bit with some electrical tape. Wait for a mouse to run out of there. It's just still living in there. We've been zipping and banging all over this bike and he's just still holding out. This is my house. <laughs> all right, where were we before that all happened? Putting this together. That only slowed us down about half an hour. The slot in our slide isn't large enough for this thicker cable, but we can figure something out. I need to make that slot a skosh bigger. Back to the filing board. Oh, I was hoping we were gonna get a tiny Dremel. Oh, I, I could maybe. Let's see if this will fit in. No, that won't do it. Might have to use sandpaper for this. It's a quarter of a millimeter. I need a quarter of a millimeter. I need something super duper tiny. Let's see if any of this can like test fit. So we need, it goes in the big one. And I need to slide into there. If I would have known uh, it was going to be this difficult, maybe I would have soldered it on the bike. I guess let's see if we have any sort of Dremel things. How small does it have to be? Like one and a half millimeters. Let's see what this is. Out of curiosity. Yeah, this is three, you know. So it needs to be like half right. that. So half the size of that. So we need it to be a sixteenth of an inch. All right. Wah, wah, mm. Little at a time. I don't want to overheat this. Okay. Oh, let's clean that up. Maybe I can make that work. So we just made that slot a little more open there so that the cable can come through and sit down into there. So it comes up that hole through that slot and then sits down into the recess. Did we get it? Just about. Nice, right, I got it. Yes. Okay, now I know for you in the video that was gonna be a 30 second montage, but that was like three hours ago and I don't remember where we were. So what do we need to do? Put the carburetors back on, swap out the oil in the oil tank, bleed the pump, hook up some gas, tighten the spark plugs, give it some kicks, fire it up. Back on track. Back on track. 
Well, I need quite a bit more slack. You didn't make the cable too short, did you? It's kind of acting that way. But I made it the same length. It's like my world's falling apart all of a sudden, Dan. Sorry this became boring. Did that other, did it? What just dropped? The other one fell Yo. off. Yo. That's neat. It's turning into quite the no bueno machine. Yeah, but it had so many good things going for it. Like the clean tank. <laughs> just keep thinking about that clean tank, Craig. I'm gonna drum all this a hair. Yeah. You know what this party needs? Okay, now back to where we were again. Let's put this on. So that lever's gonna go over to the other carb. Yeah. I think there was a little tiny burr on the edge of that slide. There it goes. Wait, where's the... Where's the what? The piece that screws on. Did it fall off again? Probably. They always keep falling off. Keep... Craig. <laughs> Craig, work with me here. You <laughs> Stay with me. It's here somewhere. It's right there. You can't tell it right now, but this is me being mad. Crime and nitly. Friend, hi, 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 hi. Watch now. We'll get this here just right where it needs to be, and then pow, this one will break. Game on, suckers! Oh boy, that thing just totally broke. That intake boot is totally smoked. <laughs> I don't know, Dan. We might be better off running without that air cleaner. I hate to do that, but that's just how we might have to get it going here. Because I mean, that's just that's not doing anything anyway. We gotta get it going. We gotta get it going. I got some air filter foam. We might just have to uh, zip tie some air filter foam. We just gotta hear this thing run. Let's put that throttle on. Let's put this on. And that slides back. And now this needs to go onto here. And then that captures the front side of the throttle. Looks like we have two long screws and a short screw. Okay, that one's going up and down. Man, guys, we are getting close. Okay, well, that one's going up and down. Okay, so now that we have the carburetors in and in place, the slides are going up and down. This is not ideal by any stretch, but it's working for right now. We're gonna drain out this oil tank because I'm gonna put fresh oil in the oil tank. And we're gonna bleed this oil pump, get oil going up into the top end, and we'll put oil in the bottom end. And we're gonna get things cleaned up, tighten up the spark plugs, and fire this bike up. Oh my, Dan, look at this. Should we vacuum this out at some point? Oh yeah. Oh, that is nasty. So the kicker pedals rusted fast. I'm gonna to try to get that loosened up. That way when I ride it, it's not poking me in the leg. It's moving. Oh yeah. Why didn't I do that first? That's hot. I just burned everything in my mouth. Let's put some gas in it and see what happens. Yeah, 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 yeah. I did mix a little oil in here too. Even though I primed the oil pump and everything, I just, uh, you know, first run and all. He said not to mix the oil. Why'd you mix the oil? Just so I was double safe. That, that makes it more safe? Well, if they tell you I, not I, to do that, why would that make it more safe? I have peace of mind that it has oil until I know for sure that the oiling system's working. Oh, okay. It's leaking out of the petcock a little bit, but we got some gas to the carburetors. I'm ready to give this thing a few kicks and see what happens. It is leaking. Cheat quick. Use some zip ties. Could be leaking out of the petcock. See, it's coming out of here. Those seals are just all dry and leaky. Well, I think we got some gas into there. Let's put this thing on the ground, give it some kicks, see what happens. All right, I think this is the moment of truth. Are you ready, Dan? Ready. Here we go. I'm excited. The moment of truth. Who knows the last time this bike has been started? I mean, it was on Marketplace at a junkyard in New Jersey. I went and picked it up and it sat for, 
I mean, who knows? Okay, we got light, that in the middle. We are in neutral. We have spark, we have fresh spark plugs, we have clean carburetors, we have, how many kicks? How many did you say, I'm four? A, four kicks and we're gonna see some life. It won't be four and idle. Let's see what happens. That's one, two, three. No way! What? Are you serious? <laughs> <laughs> it's just going! Yo! Hey, give me Yo. a high five! This thing was like, it was like 200 bucks out of a scrap yard. <laughs> <laughs> that tire's a mess. Okay, so our clutch isn't working. Neutral. Oh, they're all down? Oh, shoot, we ran out of gas. <laughs> Three kicks, and it was started. I thought we were gonna go four kicks and we'd see a little life. I think we saw a little life after the second kick there. The second kick, third yeah. kick fires up and it runs. Holy cow. <laughs> <laughs> Can you get it going in one kick now? Yeah, let's try it. Can I get it going in one kick? Damn. Three, second, third, fourth. Should be a four speed. It needs a little bit of work, but I mean, come on. Horn works. You can't hear the horn over the engine. <laughs> Watch this, let's see if this works. Now I'm just showing off. <laughs> oh my word. It is just spewing gas out of the pet cock. That's, that's something we're gonna have to address. That's, that's really cool. <laughs> the tires are shot, it's leaking gas, and I think the exhausts are all clogged up. But I wanna ride this bike, so here we go. Sometimes you can get them to catch on fire and they just burn themselves. Yeah, that's what we need more of in this shop is things catching fire. Stall out? Yeah. I don't know if I got much more in it. Leaking a bunch of gas. How's it ride? It's amazing. Greg, you trying to smoke out the neighbors? Oh, you are dumping. Is it? You are dumping so much oh, into your on your lawn. My wife's gonna be so unimpressed. Well, there you have it. We dug this thing out of a junkyard, gave them 200 bucks for it a few hours in the afternoon, we got it running and riding. And you guys can do that too. Don't forget to like and subscribe this video. Check out one of these two right here. I know you're gonna love them. Ha! <laughs>